All right, I, I know what you're thinking. Another Zoom F6 video. Uh, I can understand where you're coming from, but to be honest, I really enjoy this device. I really enjoy what it has to offer and I really enjoy talking about it. And to be honest, I wanna be the channel with the most Zoom F6 videos on YouTube. So I think I might be there, but I don't know for sure. So if anyone wants to do the work and figure it out, cause I ain't gonna do it, let me know. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel, I'm Justin, and in this video we're going to be talking about my personal settings, my personal use of the Zoom F6, and things I do to prep to make sure that I'm ready for any shoot that I'm going to go to. So to give you an idea of what I'm going to be covering in this video, I separated these things into different categories, and what they are, are the PFL settings that I use, the headphone routing, which I covered in a separate video, but I'm just going to touch on it a little bit. Input settings, which if you know the menu, these are all like menu based things. The record section or rec section, as some people call it, which is fine. The time code section, which little teaser I don't really use, at least not yet. If I ever work with someone who has a time code, I will be happy to use it. And finally, the system settings, which should be fairly simple. So without any further ado, the PFL settings and probably the most important settings that you're going to be using with the Zoom F6 and any recorder that has that similar menu option. So the first thing is the source section, basically the type of microphone you're going to be using. Dynamic or condenser, if you're using a condenser, you're going to need phantom power to have it run. So if you're running a shotgun, large diaphragm, small diaphragm, anything that needs phantom power, also, if you're using a microphone that is uh, dynamic, but you have a cloud lifter or something similar that needs that, you're gonna have to throw that on as well. We'll be covering that in the Shure SM7B video where I have a FET head that I use in conjunction with it to give it that extra boost of gain. Lord knows that microphone needs it, but it's totally worth it. So next up is the trim section. Basically your gain for your microphone. This I keep between negative 12 and negative six, meaning the level that it's reading, not necessarily the level that's going into it. Every microphone's different. The Octava here that I'm recording into right now is a little more hot, so you don't have to put it up as high as like a Sennheiser. Uh, but any microphone that I use, I usually keep between there, nice healthy level above negative 12. Of course, it could go below it every so often, but that's the range, negative 12 and negative six. Gives you a nice headroom as well. Next up, the high pass filter and the limiter. With a 32 bit flow file, I never use the limiter. And with the high pass filter, I always believe that you can just use it in post and do it in post. So if you want to roll anything off like 40, 80, whatever it is, I prefer doing it like that because I don't know, I like getting the raw, most raw audio that I can get. Uh, but I do use it occasionally and I never go above 80 because chances are you might lose some quality or some tones that you're looking for but for the most part i don't turn it on i just leave it at zero or turn it off and uh roll it off in post if necessary the next three things i really don't touch i really just keep them uh the way they are default but there are the phase delay pan and monitor and of course if you want any more information on these uh, sections of the menu and sections of the PFL settings, let me know down in the comments. I could ask, answer quick questions there, or if you want me to cover a video based on certain things that I don't cover in this video, uh, there are going to be a bunch of things that I don't cover in this video, but if you have any questions or if you want a video on it in the future, I'll be happy to do that and uh, put it on the list of many videos that I have planned. Now that's it on the PFL settings. Let's go to the headphone routing. And I covered this in my headphone routing video, basically laying out how it works and what you can do with it. So I'm just gonna give you a little uh, brief explanation of it, of how I use it. So basically settings one through 10 are in your headphone routing. Uh, you can assign any track to any one of those settings, any combination of them, and you have pre and post for options, meaning the line or the mic level, whatever it may be that you wanna hear. For one through six, they are to their respective tracks. So track one is on track on setting one. I got confused in that video as well. Uh, and then so on and so forth. 
7 through 10, I usually use them as customizable ones. For this last shoot, this short film that I did, I used 7 for the labs. So usually I had two labs going. So I had, it was really cool. I had lav 1 in my left ear and lav 2 in my right ear. And it wasn't that disorienting. It was actually pretty good and uh, pretty uh, easy to get used to. I mean, I've been doing it for a while, so I know how to use multiple signals in my headphones. Uh, especially when I use the H5, you didn't have the option to uh, route it or uh, choose one or the other. You had to hear it all, which is fine. I mean, I got used to it, so this is another example. Then 8 through 10, I mixed and matched, maybe put the labs in left and the boom in right. So I played around with it. I wanted to really go into it and really try it out so that if I didn't like it, I could just go back to the regular settings and go to whatever one I want. So you have that flexibility. So the next thing is the input settings, and it's pretty easy because we just covered the PFL settings, and that's one of the sections in it. Uh, Phantom power, usually at 48. Chances are you're not going to need anything other than 48 volts, so don't really worry about it unless a microphone specifies uh, something different, which I think 24 is the other one. And then there's the power saving section, which I never use, mostly because the batteries that I use are great. They they last all day, and that short film they I went through maybe one a day, the big L series batteries and never had a problem with it. And I carry like two, three with me. So I'll never have a problem with uh, anything like that. Another thing I covered this in a video before hot swapping. So if you have the AA batteries in there as well, and you hot swap the L series, you won't lose where you are in time code or lose anything as you're moving. You could hot swap it as they call it. There's also link settings and auto mix, but I'm not covering that in this video because I really don't use them. I keep them as the default. So if you do want something specific about it, ask me down in the comments and uh, I'll do a separate video if it's a topic that I can cover for a full video. Now to one of the most important sections of the setup for me. And as I said before, setting up is key. It's major. It's really uh, makes you... Uh, work that much better because the better you are at prepping your equipment and prepping yourself for a shoot or job in general, the easier the job will be and the more uh, efficient you will be at that job. And this applies to everything, not just audio, film, or whatever. Now these settings are specific to me, what I use and what I try to uh, keep as my norm. So if you do want anything specific or want to know something about the menu system, you could check out the manual or you could just ask me down in the comments. Uh, for the mode, meaning the bit rate, I usually go 24 and 32 dual settings so that uh, I just have a backup. Chances are I'd be okay with just going with 32, but I'm a paranoid person and I don't want to lose my data. Um, but then again, thinking about it, you would probably lose it all if you had both of them or just one. So maybe it's just me be, being paranoid. But the other reason why is to give the person that I'm uh, giving the audio files to an option if they're not capable of dealing with a 32-bit or if they don't know how to use them properly. So uh, they have the option in the future. Now for sample rate, I used to do 96, but chances are no one's going to use 96 and it just makes the editing process that much harder because some people are so set in their ways and they're like, why is this like this or whatever. So uh, make it easy. 48 is pretty standard uh, unless you're told specifically, I want this sample rate or whatever it is. Stick with 48 because no one really puts anything over 48 unless you're doing really high end audio recording. Now for the file format, I go in mono stereo, keep it simple. Another thing I don't touch is the metadata. Again, down in the comments, ask questions or I'll leave the manual down there as well. And finally, the pre-roll, which is a godsend. If you are in 48 or lower, they offer you six seconds. 96 or higher is three up to 192. And if you're doing 192, it's only one second. But if you're doing stuff at 192, you're probably not going to need the pre-roll anyway, because you're probably doing something very specific and very uh, complex. So uh, don't worry about it too much. Stick to the 48. Six seconds is great. Now to the two last sections. It's going to be very easy because I don't use time code, as I've said many times. Uh, which is nothing against it. It's just that I haven't had the opportunity or the pleasure to use it in a uh, filming setting or a job or whatever it is. So maybe one day. And uh, I said this in another video. My buddy Chris from Germany 
covers some time code stuff, especially with mirrorless cameras and DSLRs. He's got some great videos on that, so go check him out. I'll leave the link down in the description and in the uh, iCard in one of the corners here. And lastly, the system section, I covered all that in my menu video. I know it's an old video. Uh, I think it's like the second or third video I put up on this channel, so it's a little dated. Uh, things were a little different back then, and if you want me to cover anything or ask any, uh, or have any questions about it down in the comments, or you can hop in my stream every weekend. So now that we've covered all my settings, all the settings that I use, as I said before, if you prep everything before, it makes things a lot easier when you're actually doing the job. So the one thing that really is different when you're on set and you're actually doing this stuff after you prepped everything is making sure your levels are good, make sure you press record, make sure you say rolling and all that stuff, good communication, everything like that. And I will cover some of that stuff and some of the on set stuff on my career part two video next week. So go check that out and subscribe if you're not so you know exactly when it comes out. And that's it. That is my Zoom F6 settings uh, tutorial or kind of like walkthrough for you guys to let you know how I use it. I'm just a simple boom operator most of the time. Uh, I do YouTube videos with this as well. So it's something that I use very often, at least at the YouTube sense. Uh, maybe when the world gets a little more normal, I can uh, finally go back to working consistently. Uh, but if anything, I'm still going to have the Zoom F6. I'm still going to cover it on this channel, and I'm still going to use it whenever I get a job uh, doing that stuff as well. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please hit the like button down below. And if you have any comments, down in the comments section, I'll be happy to answer questions. If you want to ask me more directly, I stream on the weekends now. You, trying to do it in the morning, but just keep an eye out for that. I do some dot to dot art and I play some video games. Pretty chill, easy thing. Uh, listen to stream beats, music you're hearing in the background right now. Harris Heller, very cool dude, really love his stuff and uh, free royalty, free music, copyright free music, so you don't have to worry about getting in trouble for any copyright strikes. And that's it for now. As always, be safe, be kind, and I'll see you in the next video. They say the mighty penguin will travel 300 miles with a pebble in hand to meet his mate. That's a stupid fucking line. Uh, what is wrong with my head? <laughs> oh, God. This is what happens when there's no one around. The madness sets in. <laughs>